The deeply underestimated F-104A flies out in War Thunder. Let's check it out. As the Korean War was winding down, legendary aerospace designer Kelly Johnson already had his head into designing the next generation of fighter aircraft. He spoke to pilots who had combat experience over Korea and incorporated their feedback into privately funded design work with the anticipation of having a head start when the U.S. Air Force eventually started asking for new fighters. Well, in March of 1953, Lockheed, where Johnson worked, was granted a formal development contract and the F-104 Starfighter started to take shape. The new jet was envisioned as being small, fast, with a great rate of climb, and a powerful new cannon. Almost every aspect of the new fighter's design was revolutionary for the time, and quite experimental. It had new air intakes, an ultra-thin trapezoidal wing, lightweight internal structures, and a sharply tapered fuselage. The plane was nicknamed the Missile with a Man in it by Lockheed after the first couple of prototypes showed exceptional acceleration and climb performance, achieving speeds of up to Mach 1.79 at altitude. To be clear, that was crazy fast for the mid-1950s when the Starfighter was under development. The jet first entered service with the U.S. Air Force in 1958 and saw some combat during the Vietnam War, but didn't score any kills in air combat. The plane was phased out of American service during the late 1960s, but saw considerable success on the export market thanks to a series of bribery and corruption scandals that entire books have been written about. In particular, Pakistan used the F-104A in combat extensively and generally had good success with the plane and actually got the F-104A's first air-to-air -air combat kills. The F-104A was, however, plagued by an abysmal safety record and earned a reputation as a bit of a widowmaker, and even later versions of the plane suffered very high accident and attrition rates. The F-104A also served with NASA for several decades and eventually led to improved military versions along with considerable commercial success, again, thanks to those corruption scandals. What we get in War Thunder is the F-104A Starfighter. This is a jet fighter in rank 6 of the American tech tree with a battle rating of 9.3. The combat system of the F-104A is a bit odd. You don't get any kind of ballistics computer or EEGS or anything like that, but you do get an unusual radar set. The radar is the ANASG-14. This is an I-band radar with a fixed scan angle of 90 by 92 degrees. It can lock on the targets in a pretty narrow field of view directly in front of it, but once you do lock on, you get a radar rangefinder lock instead of a more conventional radar lock that would normally display things like the target's speed, heading, rate of approach, and so on. This ends up being only situationally useful, but the display does give you a line indicating the direction to the locked target, which can help if you lose visual contact, for example, in a cloud or something. In practice, though, the radar set is more useful for its search performance. The gun you get is the M61 Vulcan Cannon. This is a huge learning curve from the jets before it in the tech tree, as it takes a moment to spin up and has an insane cyclic rate but it does enormous damage to anything you can hit with the thing. Its only external loadout is a pair of tip winders, the AIM-9B. This isn't a very good weapon in a general sense, but at this low of a BR, it can still be competitive and get kills if you're careful. It's a 10G missile with rear aspect infrared tracking and a practical engagement range of less than 3 kilometers in most circumstances. The flight performance of the F-104A is outstanding and far superior to almost anything else at its BR at anything to do with power or speed. The flatline acceleration is very strong with the afterburner going, and on takeoff, you'll usually shoot out in front of the rest of your team pretty easily. The rate of climb is good, but you want to make sure you execute a mock climb. That is, get your speed up to around Mach 1 or faster before you start going up, and try to angle your climb so that you can maintain your high airspeed. Now, speaking of airspeed, 
The Starfighter is faster than anything at its BR except the MiG-21, which has a very slight edge over it on paper, but you can still often outrun the MiG-21 since it takes longer to get up to speed and people will just give up. The rate of roll is also quite good and the jet has an effective air brake along with a responsive rudder. However, the F-104 was designed for power and speed, not dogfighting. It has a very small wing area and its turn rate is pretty bad at most airspeeds. If you're up above 800 kilometers an hour, you can sometimes get one singular tenths good energy turn out of it, but it still won't pull as hard as something like a MiG-19 or an F-86. This problem is especially pronounced at lower speeds, and if you get below 400 kilometers an hour, the F-104A turns into a frickin' cement truck. In short, don't try to dogfight with it as there are very few aircraft in its BR range that this jet can actually match in a traditional dogfight. Flying the F-104A out in emissions is significantly less flexible than most other jets at this BR. I want to say before anything else that the F-104A, like a lot of other planes that are just below BR-10, has an incredibly difficult time in an up tier. It doesn't have a radar warning receiver or any countermeasures, and it just doesn't have the agility to reliably dodge missiles, except under some very specific niche circumstances. So, all aspect missile shots are almost a hard counter against the Starfighter. The MiG-21S in particular is almost purpose-built to hunt this plane, since it gets all aspect missiles, and it can match most of the F-104's flight performance. You need to avoid the 21S like the plague, along with the F-4C if you find yourself on the opposite team, as its AIM-7s will totally mitigate the F-104A's advantages in flight performance. Now, with that said, in these reviews, I normally try and demonstrate a few different styles of gameplay and varying tactics. With this jet, not so much, as the vulture tactics you're watching are really the only way that I think an average player will be able to make this jet work. But the good news is, it does work pretty well with a little practice and a lot of patience. In short, you want to use your speed and climb performance to get up above the battlefield, then use very careful and patient positioning moves to set yourself up for a high-speed attack pass. This can often involve flying around in circles for a few minutes, then going in for someone who's chasing one of your buddies. Since the AIM-9B isn't a very reliable weapon, and your best missile shots will be against people who don't know they're under attack and don't try to dodge it. Strike jets returning to base are also pretty good targets for this. Aside from the missile shots, the Vulcan cannon is also very effective, but just remember not to get sucked into twisting dogfights. The F-104A's best air combat profile is pretty straightforward. Zoom in at high speed from a high altitude, Make your attack, and whether you hit or miss, get the fuck out. Unless you're circling above them, you shouldn't try to turn in on anyone closer than like four or five kilometers in most circumstances, and even farther if they're chasing you horizontally. This forces you into some very slow-paced interception tactics, and sometimes it's not very exciting, but it works because unless you get up-tiered, almost nobody can catch you. One extra caveat is that once you burn off most of your fuel, the agility opens up a tiny bit, and you can sometimes use like a flick roll with air brakes to get a reversal on someone who's chasing you at close range, or turn in a bit closer after an attack pass, but it's still kinda meme and it doesn't always work. In terms of ground attack, you can use the cannon on ground targets, but this is an air superiority interceptor. You should really only be attacking ground targets while you're grinding upgrades for the plane, or if there's just absolutely nothing else left to do. Visually, I've always thought the F-104 was a great looking jet. 
you get some really cool paint jobs for it, including a really nice looking Canadian one. And plus, there are tons of fun skins on War Thunder Live. Landing the Starfighter takes practice. You can drop gear at a bit over 500 kilometers an hour and flaps at around 430 or so, but your landing speed will usually need to be pretty hot. And since this jet doesn't maneuver well at low speeds, you're gonna need to line up your approach pretty far. You get a drag shoot though, which helps. The cockpit is kind of a mixed bag. The visibility isn't great and the canopy bracing is totally in the way but the instruments are mostly in good spots at least, even though the radar scope is a bit lower than I prefer. Overall, I really didn't care for this cockpit in VR. To close out on the F-104A Starfighter. This jet is built out of raw engine power. It's got a very strong cannon for its BR, and it rolls pretty well. However, it's got a staggering learning curve if you're coming up into this jet from the F-80 before it in the tech tray. It doesn't turn very well. It's got a weird radar set, and the AIM-9B is a very limited and situational weapon. The final verdict on the F-104A is that this jet is kind of a one-hit wonder. The only real way, in my opinion, for an average player to use it effectively is with those vulture tactics I discussed, but at least it's very good at those vulture tactics. As always, thanks for watching.